Morning dogs. It's early morning now and I expect today to be somewhat of a long day. I'm gonna drive down to Iowa and check out all the storm damage they had in the central part of the state. And then I'm gonna head over to the eastern part of the state and I'm gonna visit my buddy Mitchell Hora, who is my co-host on the Fieldwork Podcast. That's gonna be in the next video. Today we're gonna check out the storm damage, but first I gotta drive down to the northwest corner of Iowa and check out an auction. It's about a three and a half hour drive just to get to my first destination of the day. So I'm going to speed this up for you guys. That was easier. So these machines are going to be up on auction actually in just about an hour and a half from right now. I'm going to take, take a look at this 780. Then I also got a 680 on the other side of it. I want to look at as long as a, as well as a couple 8,000 series tractors up there. I'm passing through Iowa anyway. Why not go a couple hundred miles out of the way just to uh, check out some equipment? You never know. I'm staring at that 780 right now. I just got here. Feeder house chain looks good. It should, it's only got 580 total separator hours. Tires are good on it. I'm not a fan of this uh, rim damage, but it, it's holding air. Everything appears to be okay back here. I'm liking the Crary Big Top. It does not have a folding hopper. Just notice that. Which I've actually heard, as long as you can fit them in your sheds, that's a little more maintenance free. Looks fine inside there. Oil's been changed. Belts and pulleys look okay. Clean grain auger. All right, here's where a lot of the time you can tell what kind of a person had it before. It's a clean machine. Onto the others. Well, it's still, my phone still shows us as high bidder. What's the computer saying? Now I'm getting back to it. It's, oh, no, we must, well, it's still saying four minutes left. Oh yeah, but mine. We're still a high bidder. That's the same with mine. It jumped back to four minutes, but it shows us as high bid. Maybe we got it here, because nobody else bid then. Well, now my Let's phone, look. my phone went back to four minutes again, and it still shows high bidder again, and it doesn't show more bids. Really? Oh, now now somebody came over top of us. They did, didn't they? Yeah. They did. One more time. Unless you don't want to. I'm fine quitting. Hmm. Oh, there's somebody else. Somebody, oh. two two more. It just jumped twice. The ones are crazy high. Yeah. I'm sure this thing two years ago was five or close. Yeah. 450. Yep. But then you look at low hour 680s, if you can find one. If you can find a low hour 680, it's gonna be hundred grand cheaper. Yeah, it's gonna stay a hundred grand cheaper or eighty grand cheaper over time too. It it will. Yep. Yep. I think let it go and we'll just keep watching for something else. Okay. We tried. On to the rest of my road trip, I guess. Okay, about three and a half hours later, and I am on Highway 20 right now, just west of Fort Dodge, Iowa. I'm starting to see some definite damage. It's not every single field, and it's really inconsistent. This field here looks pretty decent, but I've seen some fields that do have considerable wind damage. I'm also seeing a lot of corn that is dry, showing some real signs of stress from, from being too dry. That started about 100 miles back to the northwest of here, and it seems to be getting a little bit, a little more uh, prevalent here in this area. For whatever reason, it seems like the beans are not showing it nearly as much as the corn, but uh, the corn is dry and I'm definitely seeing wind damage. So we'll see what I start to get into as I continue my way east here. Uh, before too long, I will turn and go south towards Ames. And then the plan is to meet some people near Hux Huxley, 
Yes, Huxley, Iowa. Sounds like there's some work going on there, some cleanup. I'm gonna hit as much as I can, but it's already, it's gotten later in the day than I expected, so we'll rush through. I'm gonna use up all the daylight that I have today. 15 miles north of Ames, Iowa, and uh, most of the leaves are stripped off the cornfields here. Definitely seeing a little bit more wind damage, but uh, more so vegetative damage, like it must have been hail. Missing a lot of, a lot of leaves on the corn. Just exited the interstate between Ames and Des Moines, and clearly some serious devastation in this area. I've seen some signs and billboards down, a lot of trees twisted up, but so far I have not, I haven't seen any buildings missing. That is the third power line crew I've seen in the last two miles. They are out fixing down, fixing up all sorts of down power lines out here. Turned off on a gravel road here. I've got a guy up the road that I'm gonna meet. It's harder to tell from this angle, but that corn is really down. We are near now Huxley, you said? Huxley, Iowa. Huxley, Iowa, and I'm here with Paul. Paul's got some row crops. You got corn and soybeans. Yes. And hogs, and we are standing in, this was the sow building, right? This was a farrowing house. A farrow farrowing house that he was in when the storm hit here. and I. I, I was told the, the windmill just over the hill here clocked the wind speeds at over 130 miles per hour that day. I hadn't even heard that one yet. That would put us up pretty close to a Category 4 hurricane. Yeah, Category 4 hurricane winds. As you can see here, I mean, it, it, it's crazy being here and, and seeing what happened. I mean, I'm, I'm in it now. I was coming down the road giving them some updates and okay. talking about what I saw. And once I got off I-35 out here, it's apparent. I mean, you can you can really see it, but Paul's got kind of a crazy story here where he was actually working in the barn when the storm hit. Walk us through what happened there. I was just patching a crate floor, getting ready for weaning, and uh, heard the storm come, heard the wind hit the building, and next thing I knew the lights were out, so I came out to this entryway just to see what was going on. Looked out the door, the rain going sideways, Knew I didn't belong out there. Mm -hmm. So we have a nursery that was attached to this farrowing house. Thought I'd get into that because that was the furthest away from the wind. And I, as I walked in, I watched the roof go away. Thought that's not such a good idea. Turned around, came back here. Thought about getting in the crate. Thought at least I'd be protected somewhat. And uh, I watched this roof go. So I finally just got down here in the corner and a little hair raising, but uh, said a prayer, started singing a few songs, and next thing I knew, it it seemed like a tornado. The wind kept sounding like it was howling more and more and more, but um, I finally had to pull a plywood over because there was a crack and a little hail coming down, but other than that, I firmly believe God was standing here holding this wall up. Well, something something kept the wall up and the roof above you that day. Yeah. Did you assume it was a tornado when it was happening? I did for the first two minutes. Tornadoes yeah. don't last that long. How long do you think you were hiding in here? Oh, over 30 minutes. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. It's a very it's, scary situation. I can, I cannot imagine actually. I mean, it, it is crazy. You look at the way the trees are tattered up and just about every bin is, is damaged here. You've got one in the pile over there and it's crazy. I'm just uh, glad you and you and the family are safe. You know, you're you're standing here to tell the story. So, and thank you for doing that. Thank you for. You can see here across the road. This is Paul's farm. Yet, there's three bins there where the roofs are caved in. I would assume those bins are probably bent. Um, he said there's not much grain in them, so those are probably gone. Um, there's an auger broke here. Trees laying on stuff. He's got a grain bin laying in the yard here. It sounds like he lost most of his storage. And by the looks of it, most of his buildings here. I'm gonna walk out past the hogs here and take a look at some of his corn. So this is not, not anywhere close to the worst I've seen, but it's very inconsistent across the fields. I'd say this is probably about average. If you look down in here, there is a, a decent amount that is actually broke 
This is obviously going to be a total loss. They won't be able to pick that up. The defoliation is going to stop it from finishing off the way it should. And harvest is probably going to be a nightmare in a lot of these spots because it's hard to harvest corn that's down. This corn is far enough along that it's not going to, uh, it's not going to gooseneck and come back up like it would if, if this had happened six weeks ago or a month ago. It's a shame. This is, this looks like it was decent corn, but this is what they've got now. There's another larger grain bin here that's obviously finished. More trees down. There, there's actually the floor supports for this grain bin. Up here, I was told that is the roof of the building that Paul was hiding in. One of the, one of the sides of the roof. Just incredible. Now I'm here with Dennis with GoServe. We're still on, on Paul's farm here. GoServe is kind of going around right now and, and cleaning things up. And Dennis and Mike, I'll just call them Dennis and Mike, they got in touch with me earlier today when I put it out there that I was going to be down in this area. And they told me, why don't you swing on by? And, and I had talked to Mike before and I knew about GoServe, but for the people who don't know about GoServe, can you tell them a little bit about what you guys do and what sure, you're doing here absolutely. to help Paul out? And I'll just say it was started by an Iowa farmer. Uh, it, it started out the earthquake in Haiti, that's a whole nother story. Um, souk up in the safety home, that's a whole nother story. Uh, just a great story there. But here, in, in, we're in the Huxley area and this derecho went through and you know, you showed him some of the footage. It, it's devastating. I just saw a map. There were two slivers of where they confirmed over 100 mile an hour winds. Uh, we've been working in Huxley with uh, families in town, and most of the families we're working with are, you know, in their 70s and 80s, and they just have no way that they can clean up the properties themselves. So go serve. We're here, uh, a faith-based ministry to just come alongside them. Uh, what we do best is we bring in resources and we work alongside volunteers that are on site, family members, and we can come in and clean up property. So that's what we're doing here. I mean, you, you showed them some of this stuff. It's just overwhelming, the amount of devastation. And we're just here to, to lend a hand. God loves us, we're passing that on. Well, I really appreciate you guys getting in touch with me and taking the time to show me around a little bit here and, and to show the viewers here what's really going on in Iowa. The devastation that's here and as crazy as this is, it, it's, you know, I know about it because I'm I'm involved in agriculture and, and I follow what's happening in farming and so we know about it, but I think there's a lot of people out there who haven't heard that much about this and how widespread it is and how many miles this covered. And I haven't even, I haven't talked about yet the fact that this was a derecho or derecho or, I hadn't even heard of it until now. But hundreds of miles long, this storm was massive. 770 miles is what I heard. 770 miles long and they're estimating around 10 million corn acres yep. affected, correct? Yep. I believe that's yep. the right yep. number. And the amount of grain bins that I've seen personally or on Facebook and stuff, it's just crazy what this 100 mile an hour winds did. And it wasn't, you know, in the Midwest we get 100 mile an hour gusts. Right. This was, right. you know, people are telling me 20 to 40 minutes long, depending where they were. Sustained, Sustained 100 mile well, plus winds. At least 80. You know, yeah. 100 mile was probably the top. But I mean, imagine 20 mile or, or 80 mile an hour winds for 20 minutes. Right. This is some of the corn right across the road. I'm going to jump out to look at it. But a quick note here I wanted to mention Go Serve Global again and, and just say that. Those guys run entirely off of donations and volunteers, and um, as such, I think it's a great uh, it's a great cause. And so, I left them with a donation because, unfortunately, I'm not able to volunteer tonight. So, if anybody else is interested, I would encourage that at least check them out. They do uh, some great work, as you can see. Wow, isn't it amazing how row number one stood, and as soon as you cross that line. This is, this is crazy. It's mostly below my knees. That is devastating. I'm headed down the road to our next visit here, but the damage just doesn't end. You can see the trees ripped apart. Every farm site's got buildings and grain bins that are tore up. Not to mention there is power crews everywhere everywhere you go and 
there are tons of people around here who still don't have power and it has been one week to the day today since this storm hit. So we're down in the cornfield here now, just a few miles south of where we were before. I'm here with Mike, Phil, Lee, and two Nicks. I got it right? You got it right. I got it all, I'm good, we're good. So these guys farm down here. We are, um, we're still by Huxley. Yep. Is that, would that be the address of where we're standing here? Yeah. Yep, yeah. And it sounds like, unfortunately, you guys were headed for what you think was probably one of your best corn crops ever till you were nailed with this thing. Yeah, but we were, we're kind of a, a 220, 225 average area. And I think we were headed for that plus a little bit in this, in this geography. Um, you go west, you start getting into some drought stress. I think it would have been a little bit less than that. But this area, I don't know if you guys agree, about 225 would be good target for where I thought we were going. So now, like with this corn here, it's not gonna be fun to harvest. No. But uh, you know, it's standing. Compared to some of the stuff I've walked in, I've gone through a lot of stuff that's broken off and you can tell it's, it's shutting down, it's done. Yep. This stuff's hanging in there, but it's defoliated so much. What do you, what do you think is gonna happen with the stuff that looks like this? This has already stood back up quite a bit from last week when this came through. So we're about exactly a week, just over a week uh, from this morning when it went through. And this has stood back up a lot. Um, but like you see here, all the tattering and everything, this plant isn't gonna be able to have the um, photosynthesis and all that other stuff to fill out the grain quite as much as it would have. So we're gonna be looking at probably some lower test weights, probably looking at a little bit of the tip back. We're not gonna be able to finish some of the kernels. I, I think we're gonna be down 10% or better from what we could have been without it. 10% is probably a good number to put on that, eight to 10%. Now, some of these other fields that are not standing as nice as this is, I mean, you're probably gonna be looking at anywhere from 20% loss to if it green snapped or if it crimped on the ground, you could be looking at the point where you can't even get it off the ground and get it. And on top of that, it's all gonna be a nightmare to harvest now, isn't it? This will be the field you look forward to harvesting. Some of the other stuff, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be as far as their stuff we won't harvest, I think. I, yeah. And it's really going to come down to what crop jesters say you can and can't do. But yeah, there's there's some fields right now that, I mean, I think that you almost would be as good going out there and vertical tailing it. When you start seeing the corn turning brown after this event and dying off, you know that it's done. A mile north of here, there's a whole field already turning brown. So that's that's got no chance for cover. So just Nick, a, a field that's... What do you think about reels? Combining with reels and then just combining the same, same direction. Go around the field and keep combining from the east or the west or north or south. And use a corn reel to help feed it in. Yeah. yeah. All options are on the table. Yep. Yeah. I think right now, I mean, what a lot of farmers are doing, I'm sure you can't probably even buy a reel right now. I mean, they probably sold out in the last week, but you're going to want to have a reel on. You're going to want to be scouting your fields, looking for which ones that you think you can go after and which ones need to be going after first. Yes. And honestly, this looks bad, but this might be the one this you might leave because it, leave leave it might stay. <laughs> yeah. And, but then you don't want to leave it there too long because otherwise you might lose what you do have. Right. Well, uh, you can see, I mean, it's been beat up, but yeah. it's standing and it's still green. Yep. It should, it should finish. I mean, this should still finish the race. A lot of the other stuff has put a 80 yard drive in and has given it up in the red zone. Yeah. And the other thing is now, if we do get to a situation, I think where you do have an ingester say, We're, you're gonna walk away from that field, it's done. Right. And you go out and destroy it, that's gonna be a perfect opportunity for a cover crop, just because you're gonna have a bigger window that you can get that crop established. Right. And yeah. then you're not leaving that soil barren, you're gonna get right. some major benefits from that cover crop. Right. Yep. The Fall problem with corn on corn that scares me is we're gonna be dealing with volunteer mess pretty bad. And so do you do corn on corn and try to recapture that nutrient? Do you just have soybeans that are, you know, full buffet, but try to control that um, corn right. on corn? Right. You're gonna have two to three year impact on this because how right. do you balance out your rotation? Right. Guys that were corn on corn, I mean, there, there's two to three years to get back to normal after right. this. Can you guys touch on, you were talking earlier about how many acres this storm impacted. Can you mention some of that? Cause I think a lot of the people watching probably don't realize how massive this storm was and what got affected here. So the storm was a 90 mile band from north to south and it traveled 780 miles in distance overall. The hardest hit area was kind of, you're in the wind tunnel. And they're saying that corn affected by that storm nationwide was 
or 37.7 yep. million. Over and 37 million acres of corn that was affected, affected by the storm. Now, mm. Iowa alone, the, the numbers that I heard for Iowa were right around 14 million crop acres. Just over half of that was corn. And if you want to talk severely damaged, they're saying 3.5 are severely damaged, which I would say this is in that 3.5 million. The rest of it is going to be stuff that has some degree of lodging, but you're talking about a yield loss on 14 million Iowa acres of crop. So that's that's a pretty big swath. That's about a third of the state. I think soybeans got a better chance to weather the storm. Right. Not to use a bad cliche there, but um, they're still in that pod fill stage. Um, I think they needed a little bit of rain and that might have helped. I've never seen soybeans lay as flat as they did last Monday, but they've kind of popped back up. Yep. They, they look like they've come back up pretty well. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and part of that's just the nature of the beast. I mean, those soybean plants, I mean, they're still doing vegetative growth as right. well as putting pods on. Yep. So, I mean, my beans are probably six, or our beans are probably six inches tall. And now, I mean, I'd say they're back up just underneath my, my waist, which is... About as tall as a lot of the cornfields. Taller than my waist, you can <laughs> say it. You can say it. The, the thing that worries about beans is when we're combining, we're going to have to be careful because there is a lot of debris. There is, right. there is yeah. tin, there is two by fours, there's right. whole grain bins that have blown out into these bean fields. And But I, I do think the beans, it, we could almost use another rain for the beans. Yeah, I'd agree. And the last one probably didn't soak in real well, huh? Not real well, no. No, anything it's that fell here. Came <laughs> yeah. Ended up in Illinois. Yeah. If you guys want an example of how crazy this storm was, and an example of who farmers are, when I got here, one of the first questions I heard was one of them asked, hey, anybody know whose grain bin that is out in the middle of Tweets Field? <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it goes. That's a 2020 question right there. That is a 2020 question summed up into one. Yeah, that's crazy. And by the way, Tweet is a Norwegian name around here, so. Just so you know. Aren't they all Norwegian they're, names they're around not, here? They're not, they're they're not, not Irish in the neighborhood. A little bit Irish? <laughs> not Swedish around here, man. They're Norwegian. <laughs> I want to take a second here and talk for, for just a minute on crop insurance because I know there's going to be a lot of people who mention the crop insurance side of this and how everything's going to be just fine. Crop insurance, when it comes to wind and hail, is a completely separate thing from federal crop insurance. Now federal crop insurance works off of a yield and a price calculation that it comes to. And then you pay to cover yourself at a certain yield and price. And you typically get, like in our area a lot of the times we will be at 75 to 80 percent guarantee of that calculation. Down here they might be up a little higher, 80, 85 percent of how that calculation works out. Talking with the last farmer, the way they we're figuring their calculations. It sounds like uh, they're expecting to be short on their on their corn acres. That that federal crop insurance guarantee is going to be roughly sixty dollars short per acre uh, than than what they calculate their break-even price at. So even with crop insurance kicking in, they're still going to be sixty dollars per acre short. On, on on making a profit. Check out this field right here. Look at that. I mean, you could you you could absolutely watch a dog walk across that entire field, and it wouldn't be easy for him to walk across that. It's crazy. Look at that. It's not turning brown like it's dead. Yeah. Well, this well, and this stuff hasn't. If you look, it hasn't broke off. No, it's still. Intact. So those plants are technically going to probably still try to finish off, but and there are some fields that you get to and where they have either crimped and they look like that. Yep. They're still going to probably try, but they're not going to be able to get all the nutrients through. And there's some of them that have just clean broke off at about a foot tall. This is crazy. I mean, you can look. You can see the. You can look as far as you can see, and you could, if you wanted to, you could count the plants that are standing. Yeah, you can see the rabbit chasing the snake. You could. Four bin pads sitting back there. Four grain bins lost and cleaned up in the last week. Just at one site right there. There's a shed with some of a roof and no walls. More grain bins missing their top. And I actually saw a trail coming through the soybean field where I'm guessing a grain bin rolled across. I was right. It's pretty obvious 
I can't get it on camera, but a grain bin from that farm went across the bean field to the neighbor's field and continued on for a mile or two by the looks of it. Man, look at that. Look at the size of those bins. Completely destroyed. Unbelievable. Was there two here that are now gone? There would have been three total. So, and they're all three obviously done for. And uh, looks like they were given to the neighbors. So they're gonna have to watch for steel when they're harvesting. I think that some Jenna turned on their generators and it backfed into the town. Into the town. <laughs> so the <laughs> city went a week without power. That's nuts. Yeah, like our farm, our personal farm in Ankeny just got power back yesterday, last, last night, night. last night about 11. And, but there's still some people, like you get up by Marshalltown, I don't think that there's a lot of people up there that have power. There's still some rural people around here that don't have power. And we've been talking with the energy company and they're out of transformers. And so they said it could be another seven days for some of those people to get power. That's crazy. So if you guys look at this pile, I mean, one of the first things that I think about when I see this pile is, that is man, I hope nobody was in there. <laughs> you suppose that's the guy that was in the blue hut? <laughs> Oof. On to the next. I am going to try to beat this sun that's going down in a hurry to get to the next place because I hear it's uh, very visual. This is Luther, Iowa now. Had to come here. Some of the damage I saw on the way here was considerably worse than anything else I'd seen yet to this point. Look at that. That is unbelievable right there. That's insane. The amount of force that it's got to take to move those monsters like that and just smash them into the ones behind them. It's going to be really interesting around here come harvest time here in six weeks or so with as many bushels of storage short as they are you know what happens now they just, you can't store it here and multiple co-ops are like this my understanding is dozens um and the and the private storage is the same way i saw a bin on the way here standing up right in the middle of the field looked like it must have tipped over rolled out there and stood back up and the corn from here to Slater, I just went 15 miles, is, you can almost count the stocks that are standing. This is, I mean, it only got worse coming this way. And I hear going down Highway 30 to the east is going to continue to be just as bad or get worse yet. And so I'm out of daylight. I'm going to go visit one more guy. I might have to come back through here on my way home on in a couple of days here. It's obviously gotten pretty dark now, so I'm going to actually finish this video on my way home in a couple of days here. But before I quit for the night, I got one more stop that I need to make. So there's a good creepy, <laughs> good creepy <laughs> close up. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. It gets even creepier over here. You look better zoomed in. <laughs> we completely forgot to record our entire encounter here. We've been talking for like three hours. Zach's been learning a lot of stuff. He even learned how to run his camera better. Well, we didn't really figure it out, but it does have a zoom twisty thing. But in my defense, I've only been using this camera for a couple years. He learned the zoom twisty thing is when you move your arm in and out or turn the camera. That works too. <laughs> that was uncomfortable. <laughs> speaking of uncomfortable, thank you guys for dinner. It was extremely delicious. Wait, why is that speaking of uncomfortable? You were, you were here for the last couple hours. All right, thank yeah, you guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming. See ya. Bye. You didn't even say happy birthday. Yeah, I did earlier. It wasn't his birthday. It yeah. probably is now. Ooh, not quite yet. Still got six minutes. Got six minutes. Yeah. Chill out, I'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Zach. See you guys. Yep, yeah, bye-bye. Those guys were weird.